Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Everybody's working for the weekend. Taking care of Okay, well, welcome to the working lunch, and this is actually our new, our new, zone, our new, set. new home, a new home. Congratulations, welcome home, Jeff. So uh, we still we're still broadcasting on the radio as well. So yes, we are. But uh, for those listening on the radio, we are here in a new studio and and filming it as a TV show now. Where before we were at the radio station and we would film it for the show. Now we actually have a set and a studio here. We're getting very fancy. It's We're been a couple of years in the works, but you know what? It happens when you come popular. Well, we want to thank the, the folks people that, have uh, spoken. That's right. The people, the people have spoken. <laughs> and the city yes, is uh, the feedback has come our, in. Yes, our demanding, presence in the neighborhood. Demanding. The Working Lunch uh, is a growing growing show. And we want to we want to give a shout out to to Judy Warren and her team, Jessica Jakes and and, and John and others here for uh, opening up their studio for us and bringing us here in. at the city's cable I feel like uh, I'm services. an adopted child. I'm, we're new here. We're we got new. a brand new family. We got a new family. We're brand moving in. I'm it's excited like, about it. It's like when Willis and um, the other Arnold Arnold were, were adopted by Mr. Drummond. Different right? strokes Mr. for different P. folks. Yes. So we want to thank uh, hey, thank the folks for adopting. You see the background? It's like the Batcave. It is. This it is, is like very a dramatic. Secret layer that I very dramatic. We're about. eventually going to have a little bit more of a set, but uh, I like hey, for it. right now it's pretty. Yeah, it, it, wait, it works. Wait till the colors change. It's like Niagara Falls without the water. Hmm. Dramatic, it is. Mm. I think I it's like wonderful, it. and we're gonna have a great show to kick it off tonight. That's too. right, we got a great show. Yeah, we've, we've got, got some great uh, guests, a couple of great here. programs here today to welcome the uh, inaugural uh, show on TV, radio, radio yeah. TV, in, in the, the new studio, in the new studio, we're breaking in the new studio, in our new crib, <laughs> live at the 508, in our new crib. We're in the basement. That doesn't mean anything. It's not the dungeon. We've moved up to the basement, though. Think of it that way. True. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's like a man cave. It's our man cave. <laughs> it's, the man. it's our man cave. So what? Yes, how, it is. How'd you, uh, how'd you do yesterday? Well, yesterday being the fact that we had a blizzard. That's right. We're Western. we're we're taping this the day after the uh, March 14th blizzard. So yeah, you know, it's very accurate. A lot of snow. A lot of heavy snow. They stamped that thing. March 14th. A lot 14th. of heavy snow. I I you know. How'd you back? I I have a snowblower, so. Oh. Not too bad. Must be nice. Well, I have that thing, that shovel. Does it yeah. like shoot it out or? No, it uh, it gets thrown. It's a, oh, a it manual shovel. Yes. I thought you meant like those electric shovels. You ever see the people that have like it's like it's like a hybrid between a shovel and a snowblower. You, it's it's like an electric shovel. You you. You get all the toys, huh? No, I don't electric have one. Shovel. I'm saying, have you seen one? Does somebody push the snowblower for you? Did you just sit in there, like, like inside the house with a little margarita and just hey, snowblow that snow away? That's yes. It's yeah. it's me versus the plows. It's man, you know that show, Man yeah. vs. Food? It's man versus machine, because I live on Belmont Street. And it's I a clean constant it. battle. It's, I throw, they toss. I throw, they, it's, it's like volleyball. Like at some point, aren't you like, oh, I'll just wait. At one point, I was going to get out I'll wait the middle till of the like, street I'll just and wait, I'll just wait till like July. Stop, go around me. Go around, but they're bigger. They toot their horn and they now, you the plow live, goes down. You live down. on Belmont, but there's no there's no um, on street parking, right? Like you no. don't, you're not you, you don't have to shove out your spot and put the like grocery cart or something. No, like, no, the chair. I, I used to do that. State very claims, territorial. State very yeah, territorial. Yeah, yeah, we Worcester is known. Uh, the three deckers and everything with the uh, on street parking. Very territorial with the. You used to put a chair, an old kitchen stand out there. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? Uh, I did see a shopping cart once. A sawhorse. Oh, so, well, that looks like legit. Yeah, that actually looks, and I think they painted police on it. But I knew my neighbor. No, no, he wasn't police. You could, you could, you could sell in Worcester like signs that say "This spot reserved," you know, by homeowner, and and sell them. And yes, yeah, that's a business. You're welcome. And and somebody would take it and move it to their spot. <laughs> so, you're right. so you're right. So you don't have to actually sell it. <laughs> you just have them out in general. <laughs> you just put them out there. People would take them. But no, it was uh, pretty adventurous. I got to say, this morning, uh, schools, are, schools are canceled again. Mm. 
So Tuesday, Wednesday, kids are on, uh, what is this, Feb March vacation? They have yeah. February vacation, they get April vacation. Now they have the uh, winter snowstorm. Yep. Yeah, I just hope they don't have to go too long during the Blizzard of 2017. Nothing like the yeah, Blizzard of 78, but it was all right. Yep. So here we are. So here we are. And we have a couple guests uh, joining us. Well, it might be a good time to, to bring them on. And, yes, uh, we them. do. And I'm excited about these because, actually, not only are you here for our first show, but you're also my official first guest that I've ever invited to the show. Jeffrey usually takes care of the uh, itinerary. The booking. I do the booking. He but. does the booking. But uh, he's, uh, he's giving me carte blanche to do some of the things that I do as a co-host. Like, you know, he has the first chair, I have the second chair, and we'll deal with that later on. But in the meantime, welcome to the show. I'd like to welcome uh, Melanie Perot LaBeouf and Amaris Gonzalez from Bottoms Up here in Worcester. Bottom line. Bottom line, <laughs> not bottoms up, bottom line. <laughs> and you guys have, you know, I just got to find out about you guys just a little while ago as a byproduct of a communication that we had. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know you were here in the city of Worcester and was just so taken back by the great program that you have. I was so excited to have you here. And maybe you could tell our general audience a little bit about what you do and where you're from and what are the programs. Melanie, let me start with you. What is Bottom Line all about? Well, thank you for having us at your man cave. We're, <laughs> you know, we're quite flattered that we're your first guests. But, um, I joined Bottom Line about four months ago. Um, Bottom Line um, was founded in uh, 1997, so we're actually celebrating our 20-year anniversary. Oh, um, and it was founded in, in Boston. So our national uh, office is right on Milk Street in Boston, okay. and we have a, a big office in Jamaica Plain. Our second site was Worcester um, eight years ago, so about eight and a half years mm -hmm. old here. And Bottom Line started off um, as an access program uh, for high school students. Okay. So we typically, um, our first class, we took 25 high school students. We recruit them in their junior year. We work with them throughout their senior year um, with their college list, applying for college, SAT prep, scholarship writing, start to finish, and then once they get their acceptance, what's the best choice for them? Sure. But we're more than the, just an access program. We actually follow them through college, um, too. So we have what's called the success program. So we have counselors that visit them on campus there, which we can talk about a little bit more uh, sure, later. Um, but Amaris is our access manager um, right now. So she's in the process. Right now, we're recruiting a class of 135 high school students to become our next class. Um, and that, are you currently working mm -hmm. with the Worcester Public School System? Yep, Worcester Public School System and then um, of other um, uh, nonprofits in the area. We mm -hmm. just spoke at Worcester Youth Connect. Um, okay. And uh, we have partnerships with a lot of other uh, nonprofits and some other schools like Abby Kelly in the area. True. So um, we work um, you know, with the AVID program and go into the AVID classes. Um, and all of our students are low-income, first-generation um, students. Okay. So now you mentioned that you've been in Worcester for eight, eight, eight years. and a half years. Yep. Where are you located in Worcester? We're right on Southbridge Street, so 40 Southbridge Street. Okay. So it's, you know, two right blocks. Right next to Hanover? Yeah, right yep. next to the Hanover, um, just two, three blocks from here. So it's easy. Um, it's very accessible for our students, so sure. they can take the bus there. Our access programs... Um, Students usually meet with our counselors uh, after school, and then a lot of our college students come in during break or just to meet with their counselors if they need help um, during the winter time or over the summer, okay. too. Um, I understand that, Amaris, you, you were a participant in the program? Yep, so oh. I was, <coughs> excuse me, so I sure. am from Worcester. I went to Burncoat, so Worcester WPS alum. Um, I was also part of AVID. Um, and I also, so one day I received a letter in the mail saying, we can help you get into college, sign up now, and I was thrilled. Um, so I was part of the first class here in Worcester uh, for Bottom Line, and I went through the Access program, and I went on to be part of the Success program in college. So I was lucky to have a Bottom Line counselor throughout my entire process, getting in, mm -hmm. graduating, and helping me find um, a career. And now I work for Bottom Line. And where did you go to college? I went to UMass Amherst. Oh, fantastic. My brother's an alumni of UMass Amherst. You're, you're a Minuteman. Yep, you're go Minuteman. Minute Minute <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about the goals of your program then, as, as a participant and then again now in your capacity as an access manager, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we are trying to support students 
um, just bridge the gap. So we are helping them with the college application process now in Access, um, and that's every anything between applications, the Common App, um, providing fee waivers, also filling out financial aid, FAFSA, IDOC, CSS profile, all these really There's complicated. A lot to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then also just analyzing award letters, making sure they're making great financial choices for themselves, also for them, their families, and then hopefully helping them uh, make a deposit by May 1st. So once they get into college, then mm -hmm. it turns over the access point it becomes more of a retention. What, what's the program kind of entail there? You'd mentioned campus visits. What's some other things? Yep, so we have 25 target schools within Massachusetts. So um, a target college has you know, a lot of our students going to. They help with financially. One of the goals of the program um, is for our college students to not graduate with more than $37,000 in debt because they are first generation low income. Mm -hmm. We don't want them returning home with you know $80,000 sure. in, in, in loans. Um, so once they're in our success programs, they visit them on campus, usually two to three times um, per semester. So we have students at UMass Amherst, Whistler State, Holy Cross. Like I said, there's 25 different access programs. So I typically our, our office is kind of minimal, bare staff during the week, except for our access and myself as a site director. But they're just meeting with them, helping them, um, you know, our, how our class is going. We have what's called a deal model. So um, it's a way yeah. to, to talk to the students. Um, do you want to talk about deal as, as a counselor for success? Sure. So prior to my role as access manager, I was a success counselor. Um, I went to visit students on campus and we would focus on the deal model which is degree, employability, aid, and life. So for a degree, maybe like time management, study skills, um, speaking with professors, getting involved, employability, working on resumes, um, networking, internships, aid, financial aid, um, and life. I, uh, struggling with roommates or struggling with, um, you know, the culture on campus or trying to balance work and life. Um, ultimately just offering support and we send these fun things called care packages twice a year um, during the probably the roughest time during the semester midterms um, with a box full of cavities so you know <laughs> um, so we have snacks and candy a bottom line gift so maybe like a, a laundry bag or a soup bowl and a, and a card. So yeah. It sounds like to me like you have a, a robust menu of, of support services that you have for the, the members in your classes. Mm -hmm. Is this what helps differentiate you from any other access type programs or things of that nature? Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, because there's a lot of access programs in there. So, mm -hmm. you know, our slogan is get in, graduate, and go far. There's a lot of people that help them get in, but there's not a lot of people that do what right. we do in the success mm -hmm. program. So, you know, the first two years is success. Um, in college, the second two is careers. So we have kind of divided out our college program into success and careers. So our career program works with them with resume writing, internships, all that fun stuff, and helping them get jobs once they graduate. So I really think, you know, last year as a whole, bottom line for Worcester had a graduation rate of 83%. So 83% of our um, college students graduated. If you look at national average, yeah, low income, low first above. generation, yeah. it's less than 30%. If you look at just, you know, average everyday yeah. student, you know, it's a little above 50. So the fact that we're graduating, you know, um, our classes in Worcester as at 83% is you know, amazing, and yeah. it's because of the work our, you know, our staff, our staff so does. How, it sounds like it would be pretty difficult, though, to have representatives at the 25 different schools. Are they assigned, like, a, are, are the success managers or success counselors, are they working with the same students, yeah. kind of the same campuses? Yeah, so um, all of our students um, are assigned as success or career counselors. So we have a success team and a career team. Um, so success will work with them freshman and, and sophomore year. Again, careers, junior and senior. They have the same counselor that is working with them. And um, each counselor typically has about 85 to 90 students. So, you know, they could be at UMass Amherst um, for two uh, days straight. Is it typically one-on-one -on -one services yeah, it's, or do it's you all do group stuff? on campus? It or? is one on one but we also have group socials because we want all the students to kind of get to know hey you're all bottom line and this summertime we do like send offs. Um, over the um, winter break we had two career nights um, in our office so people that are looking for internships or just you know 
looking for jobs. So we had a STEM career panel, and we also had like an all major um, career panel. What's the, between what's like some of the biggest reasons young people drop out? Like what's what do you, what have you found that the things you most have to maybe the most serious things you intervene with that would. You know. I think a lot of it is, is losing that financial ability. If you look at um, most people drop out of college after freshman year, and it's usually financially, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of um, students that get one-year scholarships, and then after that they lose them. So we look at, we have um, quite a few scholarships that we look at that are renewable you know, Dell, Phillips, Hanover, so they can apply 20000 a year for, for, for four years. Wow. So it's not, and, and we have scholarship writing parties in our office, so students can come in. We just had one two weeks ago um, for our high school students to come in and apply for Greater Worcester Community Foundation. Um, and we had volunteers that were in from Unum and Greater Worcester itself to help edit and, and help the, oh, the students. So we had 22 so you, so you students have in. Neighborhood partnerships yeah. helping in some of your services. Yeah. Now we talked about, so you get it, you could be dealing with the student for up to eight years. Yeah. yeah so you build years. quite the relationship with them. Could you speak about, and you mentioned the, um, the graduation rate and the high percentages that you had your success rate. Uh, some successes and goals of, the, uh, of, of your organization. I know for, for me, um, as a site director, I've been here for four months, one of their goals was, you know, increased funding, increased visibility, so, and um, more. And, and I know, top of the list, get on the working lunch yeah. show was right on there. On your very first show. First on show. On very first show. In the man so cave. check, right? Check. I had, oh, yeah, you know, boy. thank Drop you. <laughs> Also. Um, but creating more partnerships, um, career rise too, so business, you know, we want to make sure that when our kids graduate, we have business friendly partners too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Hanovers, the Unums, the UMass Memorial, all the different partners the working <coughs> work, Workforce Career Center, yeah. like we had right, um, right. a meeting with you guys a month ago. So more visibility, but also more partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, so our students are not just graduating, but they're getting jobs sure. and going far. Um, you know, we are eight and a half years old. What is our 10 year, you know, anniversary here gonna look like? Hopefully then our access class, instead of being 135, we can start recruiting 175. So that's some of the, the goals that we have is just increase in vis visibility for bottom line in the community, having the seat at the table, you know, myself just getting to where all the other youth providers are, are, are getting together. So you mentioned you're recruiting now. How can young people or a parent get involved in the program if they're watching this, if they see this, or maybe it's someone that works with a young Great person? Segue. Yeah. Like, tell us about some of your upcoming. I know you got a, a full slate of upcoming events, yeah. and maybe that can piggyback with uh, all the answers that we hate. Yeah. So our access class like is being recruited now. So go ahead and, and sure. So um, students and families can go to bottomline.org and they can apply. There's a red button that says students apply here. Um, and then a counselor will usually reach out to them within the next two weeks or so to follow up with them on the application process. Do they need to be Worcester residents? Yeah. Okay. They do. And if they're not, we do make some exceptions depending on if they, where they go to school. So it's a case by case basis. Okay. But generally speaking, it's a Worcester based program and there's mm -hmm. other communities around the country that, that, that yep. have this, but... Yep. Yep. So we're so Boston, so. Chicago, and New York, and too. some other events or whatever that you have? Sure. And we're also um, the tabling at several schools. So if you go to any of the Worcester Public School high schools and you see us, um, come to our table. We can help you with the application process. Uh, we're currently having the College Expo this Saturday on March 18th from 1 to 4 in Boston. It's going to be at State Street, so 1 Iron Street.